Wholesale is Rob Short, Wholesaler Mastermind. And you may be thinking to yourself, Rob, you're thinking, what do you have besides this amazing podcast? And I'm so glad you asked. Wholesaler Masterminds has an assortment of product and services all designed around the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesaling. As an example, we have coaching services designed to help you power wash your practice, whether you have two years or 22 years. We'll offer you speaking live engagements at divisional or national sales meetings. Our scheduling service has dedicated professionals trained in the art of getting you more appointments, wholesaler mastermind schedulers. Our speakers bureau brings you amazing speakers and processes to get better return on investment out of those speakers. And finally, our partnership, our newest partnership with Alego. If you have Alego and want to get the wholesaler masterminds channel on your Alego platform, please let us know. Wholesaler masterminds Happy to bring you this podcast and so much more. Wholesaler Masterminds, the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesaling. Can I ask you a question about LinkedIn? I, I, I want to understand your use of LinkedIn. When I say your use of LinkedIn, I mean, you know, sometimes it's easy to look at a social platform and, and be engaged in a social platform, uh, but not necessarily profit from a social platform. So you, you go about the, the process of, of collecting connections or collecting friends, uh, but, but how well can you translate the immense data that is served by the platform and convert it as a wholesaler into meaningful dollars and cents with a financial advisor, with prospects, with centers of influence? That today is going to be the topic of discussion. Welcome to the only podcast on the planet dedicated to exploring the art, science, and lifestyle of wholesalers and their leaders. This is the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. I'm your host, the founder of Wholesaler Masterminds, Rob Shore. Wholesalers, welcome back to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Dan Swift is one of the founding fathers of social selling at LinkedIn, LinkedIn Sales Solutions, and LinkedIn Sales Navigator. In 2012, LinkedIn recruited Dan as a member of the senior leadership team to hire, train, and lead the sales solutions division at LinkedIn and bring LinkedIn Sales Navigator to market. He then launched LinkedIn Sales Navigator for financial services, insurance, and banking. During his tenure, he created the LinkedIn Profile Optimization Program Resume to Reputation. This program now forms the backbone of LinkedIn's recommendations to members on profile best practices. Today, Dan helps sellers, leaders, and companies survive and thrive in an increasingly digital world. Buyers have changed the way they buy. Have you changed the way you sell? Dan Swift, welcome to the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Glad you could be here, Dan. So we talked uh, just for a moment in the pre-show about what's going to differentiate our conversation with you being a LinkedIn insider, a truly a LinkedIn insider, from a discussion with other experts, and they are, on LinkedIn. And really it's going to be a kind of investigative discussion about some of the work that you did for a particular client, for the wholesalers that are employed by that client, uh, and, and some of the guidance and tutelage that you provided to them uh, and wholesalers in the audience listening, please understand there's some, some guardrails around how deep we can go, but I'm going to try to harvest as much as we can, learn as much as we can from Dan around this case study uh, so that we can put it into our practices as well. So, so Dan, you know, tell us a little bit about who the client was, how did you get engaged, uh, and, and where did you start the journey with that client? Sure. So, yeah, the client itself was National Bank of Canada. And at the time, I was leading the financial services business unit at LinkedIn. And this was back in 2013, right? So (laughs) four or five years ago. And what was happening at the time, and and candidly kind of still is, right? The the market for wealth management in Canada at the time, and candidly all over the world, was struggling and kind of is struggling with... um, marketing and sales, the, the old ways of doing things were kind of not getting the traction that uh, they wanted to have. So um, we started speaking with National Bank. They were trying to figure out how they could essentially leverage social media broadly. And obviously running financial services for LinkedIn at the time, uh, we uh, we started speaking with a, a wonderful gentleman by the name of Martin Gagnon, who's a, a good friend of mine now. 
And he said to me, like, we've got to figure out how we can engage with consumers because, you know, the world is going digital. And the uh, traditional ways of doing things, the business models that we're currently using candidly are just not in getting the kind of ROI that they need to get. So, so Dan, Dan, plus, let, Dan, let me oh, clarify ahead, for just one please. second. I want to clarify. So, so while this conversation is emerging between you and Martin, uh, you are at LinkedIn. Is that correct? You're not independent Absolutely. on your own. So you're at LinkedIn. So yeah. I first want to ask the question around what, what, uh, what motivated Martin to go directly to uh, the source, if you will, right? Because some, some leaders would start their journey with a third party expert, but, but early back in 2013, he decides to go directly to the Oracle and, and have the conversation with LinkedIn themselves. How, how did that come about? Because I'm, I'm very curious yep. about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. So a couple of things to clarify. Um, because at LinkedIn, we have the, uh, the, the premium program, right? The LinkedIn Sales Navigator program. Um, I'd written a, a curriculum, essentially, to help um, financial services professionals leverage it in a, an effective way. And my path crossed with another gentleman in the industry who is one of those third-party experts, a gentleman by the name of Sulman Ahmed, who um, runs an organization called Servo Annex. And he'd been working with Martin for uh, a couple of years trying to figure this out. So it was a combination of the curriculum that Sulman was working on, the, uh, the, really, the push that Martin was really uh, pushing really, really hard to try and figure this out, working super closely with compliance, and then leveraging what I'd been doing at LinkedIn with other companies in this space, plus the use of the actual technology, the, the Navigator products. So it was a, a coming together of all of this, um, all at the same time, where all the brains were able to get together and figure this out. So, so Martin finds you, which is awesome, and, 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 and you're connected together by uh, your colleague. Uh, how, do, how does it evolve into uh, the work that begins? So, so st please head us further down the journey. I didn't mean to distract you by that, by, by that question. Take us further down that journey then. Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. So um, some of the things that Martin was uh, concerned with were the, the traditional, the security, the privacy, the, the compliance concerns that all the financial services firms have. But um, they, they worked incredibly closely with compliance who are particularly forward thinking and had, had figured out the kind of things that um, wholesalers could do with their own professional identities and activity on LinkedIn, um, but also what they could teach to financial investment uh, advisors. So um, that, that work had um, already been Taken, it already taken place. It was already underway, and then one of the one of the big things that was driving Martin was that he he strongly believed in this higher purpose. He strongly believed that financial advisors needed essentially he described them as digitally savvy mentors. He he believed that wholesalers could be those thought leaders to financial advisors and to investment professionals to teach them how they could potentially leverage social and specifically LinkedIn to do prospecting and to engage with clients. And, um, and it felt like the, the perfect storm. What was the moniker that he, he, he threw out there? What was the title he threw out? Because I loved it and I want to say it. <laughs> Digitally Savvy Mentors. Digitally Savvy. God, I love that. And this is, <laughs> I, I realize it's not the dark ages. It's 2013. But, but you know, that is, as you said earlier, five years ago. So that's, yeah. that's rather forward thinking. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, yeah. and just to clarify, as we kind of look at the, the timeline along the road, Sales Navigator, the formal program of Sales Navigator, was it even launched in 2013? <laughs> it had just launched. So I joined in 2012 and we had at the time uh, uh, almost a beta product, right? It was a premium subscription um, and it's in its infancy. Uh, but yeah, it was very, very early on. So the product had been in the market for nine months, maybe 12 months. Let's let's take a look at one thing that you said, which which was a kind of a byproduct of the bigger story, which was some of uh, the permission and correct me if I'm wrong, some of the permission that you worked with, and is it, I don't want to mispronounce his name, that would be terrible. Is it Martin or Martin or let's... Martin. Mar Martin. Martin. Mar Mar Martin, if you're listening, I apologize. Uh, Martin, uh, you worked with Martin, you worked with compliance department, and one of the things that you looked at, again, I'm going back to everything that you said and picking out this one piece. The one thing that you talked about was, was the ability to uh, 
enhance or, or and, and better perfect their own profiles. The link, you know, the wholesaler's own profile. Did I hear you say that correctly? Correct. We've we've covered some of this ground before, and I do want to stay on the study, but this is part of the of the case study. What were some of the things? If you had if you had to like pick three, pick three things that if if you're gonna take your LinkedIn profile from where it is today to a better place, what three things would you throw out? Before I give you the tactical things, yeah. I'll give you a strategic thing first of all. Please. Um, most people, not forget financial services now for a moment, most people when they join LinkedIn, they join to get a job, change professions, uh, whatever it might be, career progression, and they tend to upload their resume or uh, their CV, wherever in the world you are, yeah. and, and it comes across very much to appeal to recruiters or hiring managers, branch managers, whatever it might be. Obviously, the problem with that is it's not putting your professional reputation forward. It comes across as a little egotistical, lots of bullet points and things that don't really appeal in this example to financial advisors. So the bigger strategic shift was for wholesalers to move away from that approach and start leveraging their profile to describe how they have a rich experience of helping financial advisors achieve their goals and by default being fantastic wholesalers. So... Uh because I'm guilty of this right on my LinkedIn profile is I, I have, a spe this is like prior jobs, right? So prior mm -hmm. jobs I have, you know, bullet point format, resume point format of how much we increase revenue or how much we increase profits or, you know, wh whatever that was, those still exist. Are those the things you're saying that shouldn't be there? Yeah. If they, if they add value to the end user of your profile, who in this example would be the financial advisors, if they add value to them and it's interesting to them, then yeah, sure, include them. But if it adds no value to your end buyer or your end target audience, then then no, you should absolutely not because it takes away from uh, what you're solving for. So anything you have on your profile has to add value, uh, be additive to the person that you're trying to connect with and build relationships with. Awesome point. All right. So that was the strategic. What about three tactical? Tactical. Superb. So first of all, from a branding perspective, uh, all of these wholesalers had uh, the banner behind the LinkedIn profile. Yep. Uh, that, that had to be obviously National Bank of Canada approved by compliance. The recommendations on photographs, uh, many people say this, but it's so important. Um, the photograph has to be that headshot. You have to smile. People buy from people. And, uh, and no distractions in the background, right? It has to be super clear. And a recent photograph, one that looks like you, there's nothing more disturbing than when, a, when an advisor is expecting a wholesaler and someone 10 years older shows up. Not that that's a problem, but it's just a little bit alarming at the start of a business meeting. And then the third and final one is, in my opinion, it's not the professional head headline is the summary. Uh, the summary is probably the biggest missed opportunity for professionals on LinkedIn. There's 2,000 characters that you can leverage. Now, I'm not saying you should leverage them, but there's space. It's your electronic billboard. And you can leverage that, in my opinion, with three things. The first one should always be, what is the challenge that you're solving for? Like, how are you helping your end target achieve their goals? The second one is, what is your experience? What is your professional experience in a short paragraph that, that shows that you've got experience helping those people achieve their goals? The third piece is, in this example, what is National Bank's USP? Like, what is it from the About Us section of the, the website that should be in the, the summary? And the fourth is a call to action, something along the lines of, if you would like to connect with me, feel free and we'll get together for a chat. Something very uh, non-threatening. And that's how I would uh, recommend the, the members leverage it. That's awesome. And, and uh, wholesalers, just so you know, if you go back to, I want to say show 3, 14 or 15, You'll see a whole store, a whole show that we did with Kim Peterson Stone all around the summary section. So we covered a whole show <laughs> on the summary section because I uh, am a believer, uh, as Dan has just uh, outlined, that that whole summary section is underutilized by most members of LinkedIn and wholesalers are equally guilty of that. So uh, thank you for that. Sure. All right, but let's just jump back into then uh, the case study. Um, let's, let's, let's maybe position it from working backward um, what was the outcome, uh, ultimately they, they wanted the, the wholesaler to be able to be a digital mentor to the advisor. So, so how did, how did you arm them? How did you prepare them? That's a, that's a heady, uh, aspiration. How, how did you prepare them to take that role? 
Sure. So there was there was going to be essentially four slash five things that we had to ensure that the wholesaler was going to be able to succeed when speaking with a financial advisor. So the first one is that, sadly, um, there's a large proportion of financial advisors still, but remember this was four or five years ago, but still had these preconceived notions that social media as a thing was just a waste of time. Um, waste of time, productivity killer, huge security and privacy risk enabler. There was a lot of reasons why they felt they shouldn't lean in. So we had to teach wholesalers with support from Sulman Ahmed um, how they could, how they should think about social media in a different way. So that was the first thing. We taught wholesalers how to have that conversation. The second thing was we we wanted to make sure they knew how to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator in a way that was going to drive real results and quickly. So again, because I was working in this financial services role, I'd already done the heavy lifting. So I knew how to teach wholesalers how to teach financial advisors. The third piece was um, we wanted to make sure that that combined with uh, the LinkedIn platform as a whole, right? So your profile, your network, and, and the content that you share was weaved into the strategy. And then the fourth was we wanted to make sure that wholesalers could equally find advisors, but then advisors were taught by the wholesalers to find high net worth or super high net worth individuals and expand their, their centers of influence. So there was a, there was, there was a lot going on. I, I want, I'm thinking about how I want to, I want to break that down. Um, let's talk about the, the, the sales navigator piece. Well, actually let's start at the beginning. I, here we are in 2018. I appreciate the fact that your journey started with them in 2013. We'd like to think that over five years time, uh, advisors have taken a different attitude towards social and lo and behold, that may not be true. So, so what is it that you're saying? What is your counsel? What is your guidance to, to get, uh, the, the disbeliever, the non-believer, uh, to warm up to the fact that, especially on a professional platform like LinkedIn, there's uh, goodness to be had if they would just break through their hesitancy. Sure. Well, first of all, I always look at things from a from a data perspective. So LinkedIn today has 530 plus million members, and I believe it's about 130 million or, or so that are active every single day. So first of all, you, you break that down. <laughs> There's a lot of people active on a daily basis in the professional world. You said who, 130 million. 130 million on an active day. I mean, a, a per a, day. Yes. On a daily basis. Yes, active. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so anyone who's a disbeliever to say, oh, you know, LinkedIn is not an active network or social media isn't a place to try and uh, conduct any form of business. That's just, that's just nonsensical. And then it's teaching people how to, to leverage a tool without wasting the time because without guidance, without, uh, guardrails, Yes, you can get lost very quickly, frustrated. You don't realize return on your investment and you tend to give up. So those are some of the reasons why we should uh, alert the advisor that, that if they would just take the time, make the investment of time, that it will uh, reap rewards conceptually. But when you look at something like Sales Navigator, what, what's, I mean, what is the learning curve on Sales Nav Navigator? How is it gonna benefit me? Because if I'm being perfectly candid and frank, I don't use it and haven't seen the reason to use it, and, and I'm going to put myself in, in the in the shoes of the wholesaler for just a moment. How how should I be viewing Sales Navigator as a more powerful tool if I'm not even considering it as a sales tool today? Shame on me. Sure, sure. So the way that we always used to, and and I still do in my new role here, um, I I teach advisors how essentially to leverage the search capabilities within the platform to start looking for, for example, and there's so many different ways, for example, C-level executives operating maybe in certain types of industries in certain zip codes, and then you pull a, a list of all of the results, and then if you've done the other things which is on free LinkedIn, i.e. your profile, your network, and content, you can then map your network to those individuals and start leveraging warm introductions at scale to high net worth individuals. So very, very quickly, you can be having all of the right conversations with the right people and not wasting your time trying to figure out who you should be speaking with. What were some of the biggest challenges that, that the wholesalers faced at NBC? So is it safe to assume, just like the advisor population, so the population of a team of wholesalers at NBC, not every wholesaler 
was, you know, grooving on being an advisor sure. mentor digitally. Uh, so that strikes me as, as one uh, hump to get over. Uh, but, but if you could expound upon my suspicion of that, confirm or deny, but then what else were, were the, the, the challenges that were surrounding wholesalers as you began to take this path? Sure. I mean, Martin spoke um, on a panel at LinkedIn Finance Connect, you know, years ago, and he said candidly there were some people who got LinkedIn and were very keen and wanted to learn, and then other people who did not have a clue and didn't even have a, a LinkedIn account. So it was getting everyone to that um, that same level of understanding, and and then putting this curriculum in place to show them how to then go do it. So you're absolutely right. It was uh, it was a real mixture of of knowledge and experience. Was it baked into performance? I mean, I don't know if you're privy to this, but it strikes me that with any sales organization, with any organization, I mean, you, you, there, there's carrot and stick, right? I mean, you, you, can, you can smile and, and extol all the virtues of why this makes sense for the sales organization and why we should do it. And then there's the stick, which is it's going to be part of your performance review. I'm going to be looking for this to be uh, uh, these, these uh, particular milestones to be met as far as being able to leverage the platform and have your your, your, your profile more properly uh, constructed, et cetera. Do you know if they uh, used a, a combination of carrot and stick? Um, I don't know whether it was... Um I don't know whether it was stick, uh, <laughs> but I can tell you a few things about performance. Should we should we jump into a little bit of the things that we can share around um, the ROI? Yeah, please. Well, I, well you okay. read you read my mind. I was heading to so <laughs> so. What was the outcome of this? But yes, absolutely. Yeah, sure. So let's let's talk a little bit about that. So so the the way that Martin described it, he talks about a four hundred percent return on the investment that he made in the curriculum to actually train the wholesalers to go do their thing with the advisors, plus the licenses that they had to buy to LinkedIn Sales Navigator. So all of that combined for his wholesale organization, he talks about a 400% ROI on that over a 10 month period. And that was just the first 10 months. So you can imagine there was ramp time built into that as well. So he always talks about it being a massive underestimation in terms of ROI. Were there any other data points that you were tracking? And and by the way, that that four hundred percent return on investment. And, and you know, I'm just going to play devil's advocate for a hot second. Sure. LinkedIn Navigator is not that expensive. So so the the cost that he was also baking into the equation was man hour time with getting people trained, being able to bring in experts to be able to assist in the training process. What was baked into the cost? You know, the the expense end of that. You're absolutely that. All, all of that plus um, consulting that the third party did. Um, with the compliance function to ensure, ensure that all of the decks that were going to be used to present uh, to wholesalers to train them and then for wholesalers to use to train advisors were all approved by compliance. So there's a lot of um, extra costs. But you're absolutely right to ask the question. Of course, that was uh, very much included as well. And what about um, how sticky was all of this? Because, and, and I, I don't at all throw stones at NBC. As a matter of fact, I, hopefully NBC, you know I've been praising you throughout this. Uh, however, uh, sales organizations, all sales organizations in every industry can have a propensity for shiny object syndrome. So uh, here we went out and spent a whole bunch of money. Uh, it, it worked out great. We have a 400% ROI over the course of 10 months and a new shiny penny comes into the mix circa 2015, let's say, and all the work that we've done on LinkedIn was a pleasant and fond memory. So, so how well, how sticky has it been? And, and how much reporting back have you had, if any, about the ongoing success? Yeah, so very sticky. Um, what they did in the early days, um, because obviously Martin wanted to prove to his leadership team that it wasn't a waste of time and a waste of money, um, they were leveraging Salesforce at the time. So they were having all wholesalers, which was a little bit, a little bit of a challenge to do uh, initially, having all wholesalers actually log meetings that they were having, what meetings with which advisors, what the outcome was, excluding existing advisors, I must stress. And, um, and that's where they got this initial data in the early days, uh, that the first three months that wholesalers had, I believe it's 250 meetings with over 500 investment advisors where training was providing on how to, to use LinkedIn. So that was some of the early days. Now, the relationship, I believe, and obviously I'm no longer at LinkedIn, um, but the relationship has developed and grown since then. So the program hasn't gone away. This is, this is something that's remained very much part of the, uh, the arsenal. That's awesome. That's great to hear. Dan, you have been a font of information. Thank you for <laughs> unpacking some of the successes 
of uh, National Bank Canada and National Bank Canada. Shout out to you for all those successes. Dan, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Wholesalers, come back next time for another episode of the new Wholesaler Masterminds radio show. You'll find all of our content at wholesalermasterminds.com and the podcast can be found at iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play. Play.